In this tutorial, we will learn how to move using a character controller. This will include moving using keyboard inputs, gravity, and also a jump mechanic. Character controller are just like capsule collider, but they contain additional functionality to help us move the object around. In this current scene, you're going to find some platform which we'll be using to actually test out our movement mechanic. If you have not already, you should download the asset package found in the description down below. You could also create your own novel using primitive or 3D models. We will start this tutorial by creating a player game object. To do this, head over to game object, 3D model, and then create a new capsule. Let's reposition our object by changing the transform component at the top right here. This is in your inspector. I will put mine on 000 and then move it around using the gizmos. We are then going to replace the capsule collider by a character controller component. In your inspector, right click on capsule collider and then hit Remove Component. Then, let's click on Add Component and add a new Character Controller component. Notice that the collider looks exactly the same as the capsule one. Then let's rename our object to Player for clarity purpose. Perfect, now we're ready to start scripting out our movement. So to do this, we're going to add a new component to our game object. In your inspector, click on Add Component. We will call ours Player Movement. Once you're ready, go ahead and create a new script, create an add, and now we have the Player Movement component on our player. So this Player Movement component it's going to be used to capture our input and transform it into object movement. Our component is now in the object. We will open it up in your favorite editor by double clicking on the new script, either here or here. Now that we are in our scripting environment, we will start by declaring a variable of type character controller. We then assign it to the existing character controller component on our object by using the getComponent function. This is something we do inside of the start function because we need to only assign it once and it never changes. The second step will be to grab the keyboard's input. Those are subject to change every frame, so we will put our logic inside of the update function. So basically, we want to know if the player has the movement keys held down. Those keys are WASD or the arrow keys on the right hand side of your keyboard. Luckily for us, Unity has some inputs already set up that we can use to recognize those keys. We can find them under Edit, Project Settings, and then Input. They are going to appear on the right hand side here in the Inspector. Under Axis, you're going to find Horizontal and Vertical. The inputs are represented as Axis. There is a positive and a negative key. A positive key will result in 1 a negative key will result in minus 1, and no inputs at all is going to give you 0. Back in our code, we are going to call this input axis with this following line.
Notice that I kept the result of those x's into two different variables called x and z. In Unity, the y-axis is upward and downward. We don't really want to allow the player to move on this axis unless he's jumping or falling. If we want to move in a 3D world, we're going to need three-dimensional directions. Right now, we only have two floats for the x and also the z. Let's merge them together in a vector3 object. So we will declare a vector3. This is going to be the move delta. And we're going to say this is equal to a new vector that we'll declare right here on the fly with those following values. x, which is our movement left and right. 0, that's our movement up and down, so we're not modifying this right now. And finally z, that's our movement forward and backward. Like I mentioned, I've left the y-axis empty for now as we did not implement the jump mechanic yet. To move our character controller, we will use its reference to call the move function, passing our vector3 as a parameter. Let's head back into Unity and test this out. While the game is playing, press the WASD key or the arrow keys to move the object around. You'll notice that he moves fairly quickly. We want to control the speed at which it can move to help balance our gameplay of course. So at the top of our script, we are going to add a speed value. Let's make sure that this one is public so we can edit it while the game is playing. I will assign this to 5 by default. And then let's go down to our update loop and make sure we modify these two values so they can be multiplied by our speed. Currently, you're going to have a movement that is 5 times faster than what we currently had, which is obviously too fast. But this is because our object will move at a pace of 5 meters a frame. This next modification will change our speed from 5 meters a frame to 5 meters a second. More information on time the delta time can be found in the description down below. We can now play our game and adjust the value directly in the inspector. You can find the speed value under the inspector when you have your player selected. He now moves at a pace of 5 meters a second. If we want to go at 10, just modify the value over here and you're going to see a slight difference. So right now we currently move on the x-axis and we also move on the z-axis. It is now time to tackle the y-axis. In the real world, we're pulled down by gravity. Same thing should apply to this character controller. Let's jump back into our code and go sneak right after our keyboard inputs. We are going to create a new float. This float y is going to contain a number, negative number, that is going to simulate gravity for now. We will then take this float and copy it inside of our move delta. We now have a full 3D direction that we can move in. Let's save this and head over to our game again. It's a lot more realistic, but we're still missing the jump feature. For this one, we are going to require another float value to keep track of our vertical velocity. This one can stay private because we're not supposed to be modifying it. In the real world, our vertical velocity is stable most of the time. This is because gravity is pushing us down, but the floor keeps us from falling, unless of course we're jumping. Let's apply this to our mechanic as well. Let's go down in the update loop and somewhere right here, right after our three floats, 
but before we actually move, we are going to check, are we on the floor right now? We first start by asking our character controller if he's on the floor. If that is the case, let's keep our vertical velocity equal to the gravity. Else, if he's not grounded, we should gain downward speed every frame. Again, we're using time the delta time to make sure our numbers are based off seconds and not frames. Finally, we're going to change the y variable to use our vertical velocity instead. In fact, we don't even need this one anymore. Now if we go and test this out in our game, you're going to notice that we gain speed as we fall. It's a lot better, but we're still missing the jump. To include this one, all we have to do is to make sure our controller is on the floor, so head over in between these brackets, and then check if he wants to jump. This could be done using a keyboard input, or of course, a button input. Then, once we know that he wants to jump and that he's on the floor, we can apply upward force to a vertical velocity. And now as you can tell, we get a moving character that is being affected by gravity and that can jump around. Now that you know how to use the character controller to move around, I invite you to improve on the script. See if you can improve the script, maybe by creating some public float that we can modify directly in the inspector to modify the gravity or the jump force. This way we don't have any hard-coded number like right here. Also, see if you can get rid of most of the time the delta time only have one running in your script. And finally, if you're up for the challenge, try to create a terminal velocity speed. So just like in the real world, there is a maximum speed that we can go down if we're falling. Try to apply that same exact mechanic to our character controller. Thank you so much for watching guys, I will catch you in the next lesson.